This podcast is proud to be sponsored by Tuvu. Tuvu connects people, families, and communities on their values-based social media platform. There's no ads, no explicit content, just fun. Check it out at Tuvu.com. Well, today, a missionary to Russia joins us to talk about how communists overtake a culture. They did it in Russia, and now she sees how they are doing it right here, right now in America. Julie Beeling is the writer of the documentary Beneath Sheep's Clothing. Boy, that's coming up next. You know, I've never really felt comfortable sharing pictures of my kids on social media. Then I found Tuvu, a premium social app with an actual authentic community. No bots, no one trolling me or my family. Just clean, wholesome content you can trust. Welcome to the Moms for America podcast. Each week, special guests tackle the issues facing the moms of America today. Discussions include personal stories and advice on how moms can build a strong foundation of faith, family, and freedom in their homes and country. Well, hello, moms. I'm Debbie Krulaitis, your host. I'm so glad that you are here again with us this week. Right here at the top of the show, I always want to remind everyone, I know I do this every week, but I have to. Could you please like, subscribe, and share? We really need uh, to get our information out. And it's so good. I mean, today's interview, another great topic to be talking about. Tough but very interesting. We want to get this out to all of our moms. Uh, also, if you've not joined Moms for America, come on, join us, would you please? Uh, how do you do that? You just go to momsforamerica.us and you can sign up for our newsletter, uh, take advantage of all of our information, our webinars, seminars, uh, brochures, topics, all of the classes that we have are at momsforamerica.us. We're here to help you moms on your journey through motherhood. We, Moms for America, we are moms uniting all across our country. We're fighting for faith, family, freedom, and the Constitution. So please join us. It is such a great family, and we are doing some incredible things. Number one, though, helping you as moms. Also, if you have an idea or a topic for the Moms from America podcast, would you please email me? You'll go right to me here at podcast at momsamerica.net. I'd love to hear from you with any of your suggestions or any of your feedback. All righty, on to today's program. Uh, Julie Beeling is a homeschooling mom who was a missionary to Russia in the late 90s. Uh, when she returned home, she pursued a dual master's degree in Russian languages and literature and Russian and East European studies. Wow, huh? <laughs> well, Julie is the writer and the director of the documentary Beneath Sheep's Clothing, the communist takeover of culture in the USSR and the parallels in today's America. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start the show with the trailer. Watch this. Here's the thing about communism. When it comes knocking at your door, it doesn't say, hi, I'm here to impoverish, enslave, and murder you. It says, I'm here to liberate you from oppression. I thought of myself as a happy kid. I had no idea that I was being brainwashed. Go into the church and then rise in. That's right. All of them is infiltrated. This was a rape of the body of Christ. You take over the colleges of education, then you take over all the teachers, then you take over all the students, and thus you get the future. He said the ultimate objective of having government school was to destroy Christianity. Those were his words. People's war means to destroy the opposing country through unconventional methods. And Khrushchev bragged about it. We'll take America without firing a shot. In other words, Marxism-Leninism ideology is being pumped into the soft heads of American students without being challenged. The result? The result you can see. The 
there are ravening wolves in sheep's clothing all over the place. Wow, what an incredible uh, movie this is going to be. That trailer is super hard hitting and it really makes you want to see this. Um, and it really does make you want to pause and just take a moment and kind of get yourself together. Um, I am really excited to be discussing this movie, this documentary, this film with Julie. Uh, she's joining us here on the podcast. And uh, thank you, Julie, for coming on and sharing this and the history behind it and why you did it. So welcome. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. All right, Julie, would you just, before we dive into the story and the movie and everything else here, would you tell us a little bit about you? I know you're a mom. Yeah, I have a nine-year-old son. I'm, I homeschool him. I'm a single mom and we're just um, doing life together. But um, <laughs> my background as to how I got into, how did I come to make a film? Mm -hmm. uh, it all started back in the late nineties when I was a missionary in Russia for a year and a half and observed life in post-Soviet Russia. It was kind of a spiritual renaissance when I was there. A lot of people were really interested in exploring faith at that time. It was just a few years after the collapse of the Soviet Union, where, you know, enforced atheism. The, the population, population was forced to either be atheist or to hide their faith or wow. to have their faith controlled. So it was a renaissance at that time. But I came back to the U.S. and I went to graduate school and I wrote my master's thesis. Um, what For graduate school, I was studying Russian and East European studies and Russian language and literature. And I wrote my thesis on underground Christian movements in the Soviet Union, their survival tactics and the tactics of the Soviet state to try to dismantle Christianity. Jeez, what a heavy topic. What a tough topic. And um the stories that one would hear, see, and are unthinkable, I know. Um, why did you end up in Russia? I just wanted to ask that question because not everybody gets to be a missionary in Russia. Yeah, I was an LDS missionary. And mm -hmm. the way that works is you put your application in and they, they assign you to where they want you to go. And I did take two and a half years of Russian language in my undergraduate. Right. So, so you were natural. <laughs> well, <laughs> Yeah, I and I love the Russian language and I, I I love the Russian people too. I still do. Um but so that's how I ended up in Russia and just kind of happened. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about the the history. Uh let's get everybody up to speed on the communist takeover in Russia after the Russian monarchy was taken to monarchy monarchy. I'm having a hard time here. Was taken down by the communists. Uh next came the church, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So in, in Imperial Russia, before the Soviet Union um, came about, it was co-ruled by the Tsar and the Russian Orthodox Church. Mm. So the Bolsheviks, you know, they came in, they executed Tsar Nicholas II, and then they came in and they they executed a lot of Russian Orthodox clergy. They arrested them, rounded them up. Jeez. Some of them put sent to the gulag, tortured, many of them were tortured. And then they, they turned their eyes to all of the churches that were there. And um, it was a bloodbath not just churches, if there was a bloodbath in general across um, Russia and the Soviet Union. Um, communism is it's the deadliest form of government in the world's history. I'm sure I don't have to tell you that. And your audience is probably a lot more um, educated on this topic than most. Uh, yeah. Deadliest form of government in the world's history. When people Unreal. ask, me, what do I have? What is, what's my issue with communism? Why am I dedicating my life to exposing communism? That's why. <laughs> yeah. Because so, it is, it's so horrific and it is literally deadly, like you said. Ugh, the stories that we've all heard, but to really dive into this, um, how tough was that for you to dive into this topic and expose it and reveal it? Well, in grad school, I took, I took a, a Soviet history class and a Soviet dissident literature class in the same semester. And let's just, I cried every day, Ugh. like during that semester and it was, it was traumatizing too. Cause I didn't, when I was a missionary there, I didn't, I don't think I even knew what the gulag was until I right. met who had survived the gulag in, in Russia. I didn't, I'd never heard of it before. I didn't know. I knew very little about Soviet history. Um, I knew, you know, about the cold war. Of course I grew up during the cold war, but it's one thing. So I met the people of Russia. I came to love them. I saw the trauma that many of them carried with mm. them. And then I was in grad school later on. And I was like, okay, this is why I met so many traumatized people, especially older people. And um, and then for my thesis, studying what they did to Christians, it was 
upwards of 12 to 24 million Christians in the Soviet Union were arrested, executed, imprisoned in the gulag. I mean, think about that. None of us can even comprehend those numbers and that amount of destructive death. Yeah. I mean, you heard you heard these stories. You wrote about this. Um I don't even know how a country recovers. Do they ever? I think there's a lot of residual trauma in the former Soviet Union, and we're seeing some of that. I think with conflict between Russia and Ukraine, there's still like some element of trauma that's being played out again. Yeah, uh, obviously it's more than just that. But, but as far as like looking at so taking my thesis and starting to see these mm -hmm. things happening in America. So the three main tactics that the Soviets used that I researched for my thesis that I saw, started seeing happening in America. Okay. The first one was anti-religious propaganda right. combined with pro-communist propaganda through the schools, sure. the media, and sure. all of society. Number sure. two, uh, they stopped persecuting all Christians in the Soviet Union. After World War II, they decided that because it was backfiring, it was breeding a lot of underground activity they decided they were only going to keep those really heavy handed uh, tactics to the fringe Christian groups that everyone considered to be cults in the Soviet Union. That was Baptists, underground Baptists, Pentecostals, Seventh-day Adventists and Jehovah's Witnesses that were still being carted off to the gulag. Their kids mm. were being taken from them and put in state run or uh, like atheist uh, boarding schools. Boarding schools, yeah. They, they weren't allowed to teach their kids to pray. No. They could have their kids taken if they were teaching their kids to pray at home. Yeah. Um, I'm seeing a lot of these parallels today. So yeah. that was religion. Um, is this the five major institutions that, that they attacked? Is that exactly where, is that where you're taking us? No, I'm, I'm talking about my master's thesis. Oh, okay. The three tactics that the Soviets used to destroy Christian, okay. to destroy Christianity. Okay. Number and then one, the, the propaganda right. to persecute just the cults, the fringe groups, not everyone, not all Christians, okay. three infiltrate the churches with KGB right. agents to control the churches from within. These are the three tactics that I found all happening in America when I wrote most of my book between 2010, and 2011. And what about how they turned the children into atheists and how they worked, uh, you know, about worshiping Lenin and all that? Talk a little bit about that because it is what they do. They go after the children because, of course, then they have the future. Yeah, they had to. So one one of the things, and we actually have a reenactment. I was mm -hmm. really excited that I ordered um, from the former Soviet Union some Soviet era, vintage Soviet era school uniforms. And we had um, child actors. We had a classroom set up. We reenacted some Soviet classroom scenes of indoctrination. And we have some scenes of woke American modern school indoctrination as well in the film. But uh, what they would do, one tactic, and this was my my major professor in grad school told me this, that she experienced this personally. They would tell, and we have this reenactment in the film. The teacher would say, okay, kids, I have, let's do a little experiment. Close your eyes. I want you to pray, say a little prayer and ask God to bring you a piece of candy. Let's see if that works. The kids close their eyes. They say their prayer. The teacher says, open your eyes. Oh, there's no candy. Oh, that means there's yeah, no God. There's no God, right. But now, children, let's try another another thing. Close your eyes and ask Uncle Lennon to bring you a piece of candy. And, and then while the children's eyes were closed, the teacher would place a piece of candy on each desk. Open oh, your eyes, lady. children. Oh, yeah. look, Uncle Lennon brought you candy. Yeah, how manipulating and how really how destructive to these kids. Let's talk about Lennon and, and the things that you kind of bring to, to light about him and his philosophy and his, obviously we've talked about the death and the destruction, but um, what was, what was he all about for those that are not up to speed on him? Well, I mean, I can't say I'm a Lenin expert, but I'll just give you an overview. Um, I mean, he was the head of the Bolsheviks that okay. violently overthrew uh, imperial Russia to violently institute communism. That's what communism is. It is a violent mm -hmm. overthrow of society right. um, and it's taking over the means of production. And they don't want just the means of production like the factories. They want the means of cultural production mm. and the schools, the mm. churches, the, the arts. And I'm going to segue away from Lenin and go to Antonio Gramsci, who you were alluding to, the cultural, the Italian cultural Marxist, who in the 20s 
So yeah, Russia had fallen to communism, but why wasn't the West falling to communism? Mm -hmm. And he decided that the West had cultural institutions that were repellent to communism that would need to be infiltrated and weakened from within mm -hmm. so as to prepare the West to fall to communism. And those prepare the Prepare the way, basically, right? Yeah. Yes. Schools, churches, the family, <clears throat> media, and the legal system. Yep. And we're in the end stages of this takeover now. And that, that's sure. what we're seeing. And we see that everywhere. We see it in the churches. We saw that even with, you know, um, the 501c3, the, the government's controlling our churches now. The division in the families are coming in and creating horrible situations with our families. Um, education, we know, has been overtaken. Media, that's been gone for a while. And and now law, we're seeing this right now play out uh, actually with President Trump and anyone else that, you know, doesn't agree with their narrative or their um, ideology. So uh, it's terrible to say, and it's frightening. And um, I think that's why we've really got to uh, wake up. And I think that situations like this, you know, this movie, this documentary will really show people we're not, this isn't sci-fi. This is real. Yeah. Beneath Sheep's Clothing is, it's a, it's an, it's a wake up call. And it's if for people who, who have been, you know, looking into the critical race theory, the queer and gender theory, they've been like, you know, learning about it and are aware of it. I promise you're going to learn a whole bunch more in Beneath Sheep's Clothing. But for people who are not aware, it's going to be, it's a slap in the face. It's a, it's a rude awakening. I don't want to be rude, but we don't have time. We have to wake people up now as many people as we can. And so mm -hmm. that's what this film is for. Not so, not just to help ourselves but to help to share the film, I hope people will to wake up friends and family as well. Um, but we're going to talk about how they can watch it and the tickets and all that stuff too. But before we actually get to that point, I did want to talk about when we we're just talking about Khrushchev, I'm not saying his name correctly, but uh, we'll take America without firing a shot. And I think Americans, we've heard this so many often that, you know, they've just been lulled to sleep. Um, do you see awakening though? Do you see um you know, the church waking up, do you see the remnant? Do you see, uh, I mean, we see moms all across the country standing up for education now and people taking their kids out of schools and homeschooling them. And really, I feel like there is a revival um, in many ways, but yet so many people are just not paying attention. I guess there's both happening. Your thoughts? Yeah. I mean, I certainly, a lot of mothers are waking up and fathers too. Um, as far as the churches go, this one is a tricky one. Um, it's very concerning to me that there's no leadership of any of the major denominations who mm -hmm. are willing to speak out about these things. Yeah. They're silent and they're giving, by being silent, they're giving tacit permission for yeah. these Marxist forces to continue. And um, one of the things that we're actually doing, um, taking from people who watch Beneath Sheep's Clothing, is we're actually going to have. Um, some training, some information for people. Some, mm -hmm. we only have time for like 10 or 15 minutes at the end of the film for solutions. Whereas, well, you guys are solution oriented. How, how much time does it take to flesh out solutions? I mean, you could spend right. your whole, you know, multiple people. So we're going to have step-by-step -step things for people to do to um, get the Marxism out of their schools, to take mm -hmm. their, ca their counties back, their cities back, their states back. How do we take our churches back? I've been thinking a lot about this and yeah, how do I mean, we? it does, it does start with the individual families, individuals and families and communities. Um, but we're going to have um, some, some tools and some things for people that they can do to try to help their church come right back. to the church. Um, we just need, we need righteous pastors that are going to, we need to invest in the pastor. So when they invest in the, in the, in the, congregation. I mean, I think that's where the breakdown is. And then, and then if you're in a church that, you know, would be more liberal or progressive or not really, you know, teaching uh, what should be or to handling the topics of today's culture, then you're kind of butting heads with the pastor. So, you know, we've even moved to a church, uh, really a patriot mining church that is about, you know, um, teaching some of the hard things in this culture. The church has avoided the hard things in the culture. <laughs> you know, who's picked it up is the schools. You know, they're more than willing to come in and teach everything about everything uh, from the pers perspective. And that's how we really lost all of our footing and all of our ground. Um, I hate I hate to to 
to share this, but America's Christian churches began to be infiltrated with communism over a century ago. Yeah. By the, by mid 20th century, half of the mainline, mainline denominations were infiltrated from the top down with mm-hmm. avowed communists whose desire it was to to destroy to to change to shift Christians away from a relationship with God and you know reconciliation through Jesus, which is the Christian that's like the kernel of Christianity to right. shift them away from that and towards social justice. Yeah. This sure is one did. thing about communism, it marries a truth to a lie. Yeah, let's talk about that because that's always the most dangerous is when you combine a truth and a lie. Um, just your perspective on that. And and not only is this in the church, which you're saying, which, you know, the communist uh, uh, infiltrating, you know, um, for, for, for decades and, you know, a century, like you said, but even uh, I know you had Alex Newman on your, in your uh, documentary, but did the same thing with governmental schools. I mean, this isn't 50 years ago. No. This has been an ideology in the church and in this country, uh, trying to take over the, our country for a very long time. And I think that's probably the most shocking part for people to understand. This right. isn't 50 years old. No. You know, uh, this is much further farther long back with an agenda that has been written out and proposed and executed. So the truth and the lie, I think that's why some, sometimes people get confused. It's like yes. love, help, you know, this, that, and then all of a sudden you've got to decipher through that. So exactly. Julie, your take on that. So if anyone's ever dealt with a narcissist or narcissistic abuse, narcissists do this as well. They gaslight their victims They project everything they're doing onto their victims and they take one thing that has a kernel of truth and they overinflate it into this big thing. It's the same, it's the same, same tactics that they use. But so the truth is that there are people who have been oppressed in the world's history. Oppression absolutely is a major theme of history, oppressed groups of people and absolutely Christians and good people. We, we should want to help people who are underprivileged, but then what, what communism does is it takes that truth and, the, and it provides a solution. The solution is the violent overthrow of society, stoking grievance and hatred and revenge. Mm. And that's what the solution that communism offers, that Marxism offers. And it, it results in impoverishment, enslavement, and death every time it's been tried. Yes. So the Christian way is um, forgiveness of, of our enemies. And yes, we should be helping the, the underprivileged as well. And but so they like to split truth in two and get one camp mm-hmm. hyper focused on one part of the truth and the other camp focus on the other part when both things should come together as one right. we should help we should serve we should try to especially the more privilege we have um but we don't want it to be stoking grievance and hatred and violence right and that's what they do they pit uh you know, classes or groups or ideology or Christians against non-Christians or, you know, and they just create a very tense society, which of course we're seeing again today. Let's talk about today. Let me just say one thing about that. Communism, it's, it's the ultimate power grab. It's Mm -hmm. the consolidation of power and resources into a tiny group of people and keeping everyone else down. So people, the people who funded the communist infiltration into America originally were not communists themselves. They were the robber barons, Rockefeller mm. Foundation. They Carnegie were capitalists, Foundation. right? They were monopoly capitalists right. that were wanting to maintain their hold on society throughout the generations. Mm. They were building their own kingdom in many yes. ways, right? Absolutely. Um, let's, yeah, let's talk about what we're seeing here today with like social emotional learning and um, whole child education. And I think this is what all of us can see. And again, you know, we, we've talked about this with uh, other authors and, and, and documentary producers because they do want to take the whole child, right? I, I often remember when my kids were like, oh, mom, I could have lunch at school. I can eat at school. And I always felt like, you know what, I'm going to send my own to, to school. If you want to stay that way. back when I was growing up, I could walk home. Couldn't do that anymore. Right. They didn't want, you know, break up the day, but I was able to walk home for lunch. And I just thought about all of a sudden they're taking all the elements of school. And I was like, I'm going to make you a lunch. It just seemed like a little bit of home. And my kids always loved that, but I mean, they will feed them. They will teach them. They will vaccinate them. They will counsel them. They will, they're just doing really everything. Right. If you step back and look at it, yeah, and they're bonding. They're they're bonding with them, and ah, and they're bonding with them. Yes, 
there's, there's good things that are happening, but if it takes away the parental authority, even in my, where I live in Southern Utah, the yeah. teachers do home visits, like, like almost like, so in my, L, the LDS church, that's my background. Mm -hmm. They, people do home visits and that's one way that they like members help each other out. Oh, okay. You mean passive or negative? I'm just trying to say, is this the school coming or is this, what, what, who is that? So this is, this is the culture. I'm just telling you the culture of where I live in the Mormon culture, which the huge portion of where I live is, is LDS or Mormon. It's in the culture of the church that people do home visits to help each other out. So now okay. here in, in the schools, they're sending teachers to do home mm. visits. And like, are they like taking notes on stuff? Like I, like, because they're collecting data on our children. Sure. And I have my, I have a niece, my sister and her family live in California. And my niece was telling me the kinds of questions that her math teacher has given them surveys on, which are extremely personal about their families. It's, it's, it's kind of creepy. And the teachers themselves probably don't understand what's going on. They probably just think they're trying to help. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, but well, they wrap it. They wrap it as they're helping, but they're they're data mining, they're investigating, they're looking, and then all of a sudden, you know, you get the, uh, you know, you get child protective services at your door. Oh, how that well, happen? And in the case of like the whole trans thing, there's certain states that are saying, oh, if if parents right. don't want to, to um, do the gender affirming care for their kids, their kids mm -hmm. are trans refugees, they can come. The state will take the kids. And the state will trans the kids and the parents lose custody. That's hap that's happening in several states. Oh, yeah. And they're taking the kids away. Yeah. And these kids and these parents have to. I mean, we, you know, uh, promoted a documentary from Epic Times, but it was very clear. Like, if you don't do what your child wants to do at 11 years old, we will come in and we will take your child because your child's going to kill, kill themselves if you right. don't. And they just start bullying and they just don't let those parents parent and deal with a child that has definitely some psychological issues that needs to be worked out at home, you know, back right. in the home. But no, they're going to go ahead and take it over. And it is shocking. And I think a lot of parents have really seen this complete overreach uh, from the government, data mining their children, influencing their children, and becoming the greatest counselors that are wiser than your parents at home. And uh, we're not standing for it. And that's why this documentary um, is just so important. Let's talk about this again so the moms know where they can get it and um, you know how they can watch it. Yeah, so it's Beneath Sheep's Clothing. You can go to beneathsheepsclothing.movie, view the trailer, um, grab a ticket, view it online there. It's also get available on Rumble as a pay-per-view. Um, just look up Beneath Sheep's Clothing. And um, we also, from our website, beneathsheepsclothing.movie, we have a way that people can actually uh, pay um, $149 to show the film to a large group, such as oh, a whole great. or a full school or like, you know, or whatever people want to do. It's maybe something our moms want to do in their cottage meeting or in their community um, or those folks that they're involved with in, in, in their uh, area. I had two other things real quick, Julie, before we leave. Uh, sure. What's happening on the college campuses? I mean, this is like a hot topic right now. The college campuses are and universities are a total awry. Um, that's, that's not a new tactic either, is it? No, you know, and listen, it, I understand if some people have a genuine concern that the Palestinian, you know, there's children that are, you know, being massacred. I'm not even going to get into it. like Israel was massacred first, but whatever. But but this what's what we're seeing on college campuses is the same thing over and over and over again mm -hmm. um, with woke Marxism is that you get um, a group of radicalized people. You tell them what the next issue is and that they have to fight against it. There's even videos I saw of some of the college kids being interviewed. They didn't even quite understand why they were there. Exactly. Some, I saw the same thing. Some of, these, some of these protesters are probably paid, you know, to agitators mm -hmm. and to create chaos and to radicalize people and to confuse people. And it's um, to help just, just destroy our cultural fabric and our social fabric. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Advice to the moms that are listening that maybe they're, they've got a college student or a child who would maybe be attracted to this kind of socialistic view or is communism really bad or they've gotten just really indoctrinated maybe at their campus um, or online. Oh, my gosh. Kids are being exposed to everything online. We know that. What would you say to the parents? How can they help their kids understand the reality of all this? I mean, they can watch the movie, clearly. Absolutely. 
Uh, I would say my Benny the Sheep's clothing, I would not show it to young kids. I, I, my son is too young for it because it's got right. some pretty difficult things in there. But we need to teach the history of communism to our youth and our young people. Um, if it's a college student and they're at that point, I think that's trickier. It's easier to protect your children from the indoctrination in the first place. The social and emotional learning literally deletes Judeo-Christian ethics as the foundational ideology or Americanism and inserts woke Marxism into our kids through yeah. Maoist brainwashing techniques. So exactly. the kids are, vic they've been victimized mm -hmm. by this brainwashing. Um, so I don't have anything against them. Um, we need to love them. We need to um, do what we can to show them history and show them the parallels. I do mm -hmm. hope people, you know, that young people will watch um, Beneath Sheep's Clothing because I hope that it can help some people come back from the brink. I think too, like you said, if it's, you know, if they have younger children or whatever it is, but the parent, if they watch this movie, they then will get educated. Um, you kind of, you, you get all your facts, you know, you can talk about things a little bit more passionately when you watch something like this. So um, yes. it's going to be a great resource. And thank you, Julie, for, um, you know, going on this endeavor. What It's a tough subject and it's tough history. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. And I'm, I appreciate what you guys do with Moms for America. Um, you're doing a great service and um, just kudos to all of you. All right. Well, thank you. God bless you guys and your family there. And uh, our moms will go ahead and hopefully get a chance to watch this uh, now that it's out. So thanks. Thank you so much. Again, moms, uh, very interesting discussion with Julie. You got to check out the movie. The website, again, was BeneathSheepsClothing.movie. Get a ticket, uh, be a part of this so you can help your kids and share this information. And again, just like Julie said, maybe you'll host it, maybe at your church or maybe in your cottage meetings or uh, one of the groups that you're in. So please check that out. Thanks, Julie. Also, we've been talking a lot about America, democracy, and freedom, but these threats are very, very present in today's culture, and we really cannot close our eyes, and we really have to be uh, fighting this on every avenue. That's why Moms for America is here. We're here to help you moms. Uh, teach your kids about patriotism, about the principles of liberty. Uh, let me tell you again about the cottage meetings. When you go to momsforamerica.us, check out the cottage meetings. It's a 12-part series that you can learn those principles of liberty and teach those to your kids in your home uh, and train them up about America's freedom and uh, all the incredible things that we have as Americans, including our, our freedom of religion and our freedom of speech and uh, just all the liberties we have in America. What a great place to live. When you see this document and you see this movie, you so appreciate America. All right, uh, moms, I also want to remind you that when you do step by our website, would you please sign up for our newsletter? It's how we communicate with you every week. It's how we let you know about the podcasts, the blogs, the webinars, seminars, all of the information that we have. Again, that's at momsforamerica.us. We say this every week, moms, because it is true. Liberty, liberty begins at home, right with you. You are your child's greatest influencer and no one loves them more than you. So we want to encourage you every week inspire you, empower you um, as moms, because we do believe that it's the moms that are going to save this country. Uh, again, like, subscribe, and share, and uh, I will see you next week, right, uh, for another inspiring, informative uh, podcast. And as always, moms, let's keep changing our world one home at a time. Talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.